Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, I share four conversion rate optimization principles you need to know to optimize your store for more sales and revenue. So let's dive right into it. Hey, it's Klaus here of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today I'm here with a solo episode, no guest today, and I want to dive into conversion rate optimization. Now, we had a lot of interviews with experts in the field of SEO in the last couple of months, talking about strategies and tactics on how to optimize your store for higher conversions. In this video, I want to dive a little bit more into the principles behind e-commerce conversion rate optimization so that you understand what you need to have in mind or why we actually do conversion rate optimization and what you should look for in a thinking process uh, when you optimize your website. Now, generally speaking, a e-commerce conversion rate is somewhere between 1% and 4%. That varies a little bit by industry and depending on where your traffic is coming from. Now, most stores might have a conversion rate that is somewhere in the range of 2 point something percent. And just imagine you double that. So you bring it to 4%. You basically double your business only by optimizing your conversion rate. So that means you're not spending more money on paid ads, on traffic, on any, any other marketing activities. You just optimize your website in a way that more people buy from you on your website. So if you get it from 1% to 2%, you double your business. From 2 to 4%, you double your business. From 1% to 4%, you quadruple your business. So you see, that's why there is the reason why it is so important that to have a optimized store that basically takes the visitor, the potential buyer, step-by-step step through the process and is optimized in a way to provide the right information in the right moment. Now let's talk about conversion rate optimization principles. So there are a few of them. Basically what they do is to minimize the visual, motor, cognitive and memory load. So what does that mean? So when you're optimizing, you want to minimize the visual load and that pertains to your design of your website. So in other words, how much strain are you putting on the user to visually understand your pages? If you have a website, a web store with tons of moving animations, with pop-ups, with slide-ins, any kind of element on your website that blinks, that moves, that is a video, then people will have an overload when it comes to what they can visually process. So you want to make sure that your design is very clean and straightforward and focuses on the main elements of what a user should do on the website. Um, so think about new apps. For instance, you put in a um, fear of missing out app in there that pops out somewhere. Ask yourself, does it really help or is this just distracting on the key elements of your store, of your product detail page? So the key there is to minimize the visual load. Keep that in mind when you're picking a design and keep that in mind when you're adding more features, design features to your um, store. And that's mainly coming from apps in Shopify, that might be a pop-up where you asked for an email, a pop-up for push notification, and so on and so forth. So you want to minimize these as much as possible, which then leads us to the second conversion rate optimization principle. That is the motor load, and that's about movement. In other words, how much strain are you putting on your user to use the mouse, pointer, keyboard, keypad to get something done? If you have a website where you basically need to use the mouse or scroll around a lot to do to get certain things done, basically get to the next category, collection page, um, find the checkout button, start a video. So if you have to move around a lot on a page, this is called motoric load, and you want to keep this as little as possible. So you want to make sure that the main key elements that people should use are uh, above the fold and they are close to each other. Um, so you want to make sure that they don't need to use the mouse or the finger if they're on a mobile device too much to get certain things done. Next optimization principle is cognitive load. And that's about the amount of mental processing that is required to make sense of a page. In other words, how much intellectual burden are you imposing on the visitors to understand 
what they're trying, what you're trying to say. So that's the, the official version there. Give you an example here. If you are using difficult language, means specific industry words that the, in layman terms, the normal person on the street does not know or does not understand. Um, if you try to make things complicated by the wording, means you have long blocks of texts, long paragraph, long sentences, sentences with more than 10 words in a sentence, something, a, a complicated um, image that explains something about your product. This will all increase the cognitive load. So that means people need to have more processing power to mentally understand what the page is about. So you want to limit that. How you do this, again, is to write in a simple language, a language that your user will understand. The guideline there usually is to write for a eighth grade readability level. Unfortunately, the readability levels worldwide are relatively low. And also write in a simple language easy to understand language. And then try to make your product detail page as easy, understandable as possible. Videos usually work well because they explain, but also in the video, don't use industry terms, don't use complicated language. Try to make it as easy as possible. Now, you as the website owner, as the expert in that field, specifically if you're selling to a specific audience, um, you might be biased in what you're writing when it comes to copywriting, because obviously you know the topic, you know your niche. But always keep in mind, there might be people interested that are far behind you when it comes to their experience or know-how, and um, they still should understand what you are offering. If you lower the cognitive load, um, will have a, man a massive impact on your website. And you can broaden your potential audience that will understand what you're doing, what you're offering, and um, will feel understood and then properly will buy from you. Now come to the last of our optimization principles, and that's the memory load. That pertains to the amount of work users have to perform when recollecting something in order to use your site. In other words, how much strain on the user's memory does it to take to use your site? Give you a simple example here. So if you, for instance, have a product detail page and the shipping information or the return information is somewhere else and you put a link in there to your shipping policy page or your returns policy page and people have to click that, go over, load this page, go over the page, read your shipping terms and then they have to go back to the product detail page. Um, or even worse, they have to find the product detail page. So basically, they got lost in your website because they have to do something to get information they were looking for at one point in your store, in your website, and now need to find the point where they left off. Now, this is difficult. People have to really mem memorize or remember where they have been and how they go got there in the first place. And this increases the memory load. And also there, you want to keep this as low as possible. So people should not really have to memorize anything when they have to go through step-by-step step through your website and getting the right information. Now, key there is to provide them with the right information in the right moment. And with my example from before, put the shipping information and the return information in short words. You can still have a link to a longer page there, but in short words, directly on your page product detail page on every product detail page so that people do not have to leave the product detail page and still have the information they need. Don't overload the page. Really think about is like, what is my user, my visitor, my potential customer thinking about in that moment and what kind of information, what kind of questions will they have and then try to answer them directly on the product detail page. The same for the homepage, for instance, on the homepage, you want to have um, more trust building elements, say about um, logos, awards, qualifications, customer testimonies, all of that. You want to have these on the homepage because that's where you build up trust and people want to know more about who you are and if you are a trust worthy store that they can trust with their credit card. So here we have it. So you have the four conversion rate optimization principles, minimize visual, motor, cognitive, and memory load. How do you put these in place? 
Now, I have put together an ebook with 60 pages, which gives you not only an overview about the conversion rate optimization principles, but actually goes through page by page of your store, starting with the home page, then going to the collection page, product detail page, card page, checkout page, and gives you tips, strategies, and proven implementation um, steps to put this into your store. So very straightforward, basically a very long checklist, but also explaining why you do something that you can work your way through and implement all of these conversion principles in your store. And this will lead, if you do this and put everything into place, into a conversion rate optimization Shopify or online store. Works for every platform, not only Shopify. If you're on WooCommerce, not a problem. Works the same ex exactly there. On top of that, you get more tips on how you can optimize your thank you page, your 404 page, your about us page, and how does all of this work with the mobile version of your store. So this ebook is now available. It's 17 US dollars right now. Price will go up over time. So if you buy it now, um, you, you get it cheaper than it will be in a couple of weeks and will be an instant download. So just go ahead, the link is in the show notes in the description. Click the link. You can download immediately and start implementing. And I would recommend to do this before Q4, before the busy season, so that your store is optimized by the time really traffic hits. And as I said, if you increase your conversion rate with all of these tips by just 1%, you probably double your store revenue. So that's it for my site. I will venture off in a few days to Southeast Asia. I'll still do some interviews, but there will be probably a few less interviews in a couple of weeks because I will explore a couple of countries starting with Thailand and will be on the road for a while. And then in October, mid-end of October, I will be back in full work mode. So... I hope I could help you a little bit here with optimizing or understanding conversion rate optimization principles. Dive into the episodes of the e-commerce coffee break podcast for more episodes that we had in the past with more experts on conversion rate optimization. And you should have all the information you need to get a store optimized to the maximum and get more customers through the door. I hope that helps. I see you in the next video and have a great day.